started on the column. I'm going to fill these where I've um, plugged the holes. It's, uh, it's not too bad actually. Down here the paint was pretty shocking and it was flaking off. So, um, But elsewhere it seems to be quite well adhered. So we'll rub it all down smooth and give it a coat of primer. A little bit of filling to do here and there but it's actually not too bad. Just a lot of graft. More stupidity. This is the rule for the vertical carriage. And it goes in there like that. But you can see here that this part has been filled. Up to there, that's all filler. And it reads from zero up to 450, but it's upside down. Yeah, because that is up, so you'd you'd have to look upside down to read it. It looks like it should have been there, because that's where they filled it, and certainly this just looks like it's well, it has just been rough, roughly cut off. <laughs> So the next problem we have to deal with is the fact that that is not square to the face of the carriage because this the casting's at an angle like that. So I think what we're going to try and do is is grind that away so that until that sits square, square to that and then I will bond these in place. There's no need for them to come out. They can be part of the casting. Well, fortunately, the, the surface preparation, I think it's a bit of filler there or very, very thick. I just don't know what it is. Um, in some places, it, 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 there's, there's nothing in other places there's this cream stuff, and I think it must be filler. So why you would use filler there and not here, I don't know. But anyway, um, scraping that away, grinding that away, uh, is enough, I think, for that to be almost perfectly square. Um, it's pretty close. I'm just going to drill the second hole and I thought I'd show you how I managed to get it square. So no special equipment required. Just make sure that this, you know, you've got something as a guidance that's square to the, uh, the, the bed there and clamped against the, the faces. And then it just gives you enough of a guide that you can see Gives you enough of the guide so that you can see whether you're you're square in both planes. You can see here that I'm using again the piece of wood to make sure that my tap is nice and square in both planes. So simple visual um, references can be very very useful. So this one is is quite quite a lot uh, out of true and you can see that quite clearly when you put a flat edge on it and that's how it was from the factory which meant that the the scale was also a cop uh, and catching so the reader wasn't uh, moving freely and, and that that certainly would have um, damage the, the reader. All square and the only thing I've got to think about now is this is 0.4 of a mil lower at that end 
than it is at this end. Um, it, I'm not too worried about that. It's square. That's the most important thing. It's absolutely square to the to the carriage. Um, I just bolted that on and moving the carriage up here. That's just resting on the surface with some feelers under there. I've got a 0.4 gap. I will probably leave that because it would be too difficult to try and raise that and keep it square. So I will bond that in position and I can just use a, a little shim under that to, to bring that up. Final piece of uh, uh, testing, I'm exaggerating that angle and just teasing it away till it's perfectly flat. That's a, a nice piece of um, three quarter hard alley and it's flat. I've got a very, very slight wobble, so we're just gonna keep grinding away till I get that perfect. First one done. So that's absolutely perfectly square now. That's the bushes finished. Uh, the column is now ready for a coat of primer. Uh, 